You know what we call that? Learn ya, darn ya. Just like I said, those rabbits, they can take you out, sister. Mm-hmm. So, hey, guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We're just, a, what, two days later, maybe three, that I filmed my whole sweet potato uh, showing there with the rabbits. And at that time, I had six little plants gone. Has it been two days or three days? Folks, again, what day is it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> So glad to have you here, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. But nonetheless, did you see what happened? Did you see what happened? Let me tell you the story and what we've done to try to fix it. And hopefully this time, it's gonna work. Well, I don't know about y'all, but the rain has been relentless. Right when it starts to let up and you think you can get out here and mow and get a little bit done, boom, here comes a thunderstorm. It does look like we're gonna clear up after tomorrow and have great sunshine and some heat, baby, coming in the next week. So it's gonna be a good time to get out in the gardens and work because everything's gonna go, boo. So get ready for that, it's coming. But, you know, I went and bought all these sweet potatoes. The Lord told me, and the Lord said, little girl, don't just get one little six pack. You better get three or four of them because you just never know. You never know. You never know. So, you know, I put up this video and so many of you weighed in on this and were like, girl, that's right, you better get you some rabbit stew going. Well, let me tell you what we've done. The reason why we actually have this electric fencing around the garden, as I told you before, maybe I did, I should have, I don't know, uh, is simply because I want my dogs to be able to come in this area. Okay, so this is up. This is keeping the dogs out from running through and it's plugged in full charge to the house. Let me tell you that Buddy and Sadie have hit it <laughs> and um, they won't, they're not touching the garden fencing anymore. But here's the thing. So we thought, well, maybe that would help keep the rabbits out too. We'd put up this extra fencing over here and over there and your mama's house, and my house and her house. Uh-uh, I don't know. Came right on through they finished up the buffet. You know, in the last video, I talked about how they finished my flats out of the sweet potatoes. They like those sweet potato vines, y'all. Everybody likes sweet potatoes. And they buffeted it. They left my row here. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to pull this off, people. And by George, the next day, they just plucked them like cherries, baby. And plucked them all out. <laughs> so, the problem became the gardens being ran through by the dogs, because here's the issue. I had this one wrapped with electricity, but I told James, I said, there ain't no way I'm gonna let those dogs run because they're so silly. They're not used to this area up here. They're gonna run through my three sisters garden. We can't have that. Well, guess what? We had to go on like a day and a half rampage of trying to find any type of fencing we had to make our own stakes because guys, as you know, with everything going on right now, man, oh man, things that you have never thought about being difficult to find, very difficult to find or just non-existent at all. Like I had to go to a totally different county to get these items and we had to make them ourselves. But the goal is to put the dogs in here, okay? to keep the do some of the dogs in here. Buddy is probably, with the exception of bad weather, you know, for right now, we have decided to put old Buddy in here. Where is he? He's laying down there on the porch. He's an old beagle mix that showed up at the last property and I adopted him. Nobody, he just roamed the mountain. And you know, I'm a sucker. So I took him in and he's a shepherd beagle. He howls like Snoopy. I hope I get that on film because it's the funniest thing you've ever seen or heard in your life. He does. He thinks he's Snoopy. So naturally, he likes to just go in circles in here. So that is my main source of protection for my sweet potatoes. Now, I knew this was going to be a challenge, clearly, but I really thought that this would help. I really thought that would help, but sweethearts, I'm telling you, they can jump through it, climb through it, squeeze through it, dig under it. They can like somehow just like levitate their bodies <laughs> and just get on in here. You're gonna have to really triple doozy it up in order to get them, 
you know, out of your garden. It's just the way it is. Now, what I was really concerned about is I'm like, well, I can still, you know, I can absolutely replace my sweet potatoes. Haven't lost that much time, not that big of a deal, but oh, lousy, look what all's coming up over here. I cannot lose that. I really, really, really don't want to lose this section up against my cattle panels. If I do, the world will go on. I get it. My heart will go on. But I'm just saying, these are my Missouri wonders. And I, I can tell that they hit a few of them. This, this is all grown up really nice in the past two to three days since the massacre, the sweet potato massacre. So I got spared. So what we've been doing, let me tell you several things that I've done. And I really think all of them are helping in addition to the dogs. Now, this fencing right here has worked. So it all depends upon your setup. You, I don't know if you saw the last video, go check it out. But we did put this hard wire right here. So they're not coming in through there. Our concern was is that they were coming through the four by two and they proved that they can, which, you know, a lot of people that have been gardening a long time or you folks have been doing this a long time. You're like, mm, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. So th I, they're coming through big old fat rabbits coming through. We know that he got in here. So we know that for a fact, but I'm really convinced there's no way there's no, I mean, you should see this rabbit. There ain't no way his behind's fitting through that little thing. So we, we had that up, which is a good thing, but they can still make it through. We had the electric fencing up, but they can still make it through because he can just go right underneath there. And, you know, maybe he got a little zip. Maybe he got zapped forward. <laughs> I, James told me, he said, Tara, you made that rabbit so mad. He went in and he took out every sweet potato you had, whether he wanted to eat it or not, because you zapped his behind. I said, maybe so. But it only takes one, and it only takes one night, as you can see. What I've also done, and several of you have asked, I've actually done this on the other perimeter up there, is, man, I got mad. I came in, and I had already been grooming Cochise again. This is all, this, oh, this is one brush of Cochise. Okay, so to me, anything that I can do to try to help this, so this is your dog. They tell you, you know, dog, they don't like the sense of canines. They don't like the sense of, uh, some of you have told me, and I've had read um, Tabasco sauce, and they don't like how we smell, okay? So anything that's got your scent on it or dog scent on it, dog hair. And let me tell you something else I did. I know this is funky, cold, Medina gross, but I went around and I collected dog poop. Dog poop, I mean, you know gross right Ew. and i just put it all out here i did i'm like you're gonna smell the scent of my dogs so i have the electric fencing to keep the dogs out which it works great we've got all the blood meal by the way i didn't show you that oh and i've also bought um irish spring i've bought some today i'm gonna put it out there just to know that i did see i had the blood meal sprinkled along the border but it's rained so much you know, that's, it's like one of those things. It's, it becomes less effective. So I've just done that again. Um, and here's all my sweet little potatoes. I, I'm, I'm keeping them in the garage. I may have to sleep with them. They may have to be cuddled up with me next to James in the bed. We're going to replant these in uh, day after tomorrow. I'm going to give it another night or two and see how this goes before we risk it. Now, let's go interview Buddy and see what he thinks. Buddy, you were fierce last night barking did you see all them crazy wascally wabbits are you looking for them who are you looking for here look at the camera look at the camera baby think about rabbits think about rabbit treats yes we can get you a rabbit coat you look good you look good <laughs> so this is our survivor dog he's some rough stuff y'all don't test him. Don't be fooled. He's a savage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Go patrol it, buddy. Go patrol it. There you go. Keep going. You know the section to go to. That's what I'm talking about. Get you some rabbit, baby. Rabbit dumplings. 
We could put it on a biscuit. We could make some rabbit jerky. What do you think? What do you think? You sweet thing. Oh my goodness. Now, here's the thing. I want a dog that's gonna be out here, that likes to be outside, that doesn't like to be pampered too much, that likes to have their boundaries and roam. Buddy, Buddy is like that. I mean, he's kinda like, you know, chill there for a bit, but he works it. We were watching him. He really, they, they were coming, I think they were coming around because he was having some fits. So that's good. We haven't seen them since. So let's hope that sticks. But Cora comes out. We let her roam the perimeter. Uh, we let her do her thing, but I'm not going to leave Cora out here unattended. I'm sorry. Cora is massive. She can clear this if she really wanted to. And she's still very young. And folks, I'm going to be honest with you right now. I would go and kick my garden over with my own feet before I would ever risk the possibility of one of my dogs getting out. Sorry, can't live with that. Sorry, I'll go buy Campbell's soup and it'll be done. We'll put that in the pantry this year and that's what we did. So Buddy's a little bit smaller. You know, he's about 35 pounds, a little bit older. You know, he's not trying to necessarily get out, but he was just wanting his way. Uh, and he's a great, uh, he barks really good. So that's what we're doing. So this is, this area now is Buddy's home place. <laughs> with guests lots of special guests so we're gonna see how it goes but i would highly recommend that you get your dogs out uh you get and you know you know this and you guys that are out there a lot of you guys have been giving me some really great advice on fencing and different ideas it's very consistent i mean very very consistent it is true that the homestead the best friend of any homestead days gone by today and tomorrow is going to be a loyal dog or five, or 10, or however many like me. So <laughs> that's just the way it's gonna go. So we're gonna keep you posted, but this is gonna be ho uh, Buddy's home place for a while. I'm gonna replant, but you know, it makes you think, like I told you before, I bet our grandparents replanted a lot. And I think part of the reason why they had such success when they did is because like you've said, and like I know, they had canines, and they may have had cats. See, here's the thing. Mr. Peaches isn't roaming. I thought about this. I thought, why am I, why are we having all this? We've only had one problem over the last 10 years with a rabbit, one time. And I told James yesterday, I said, you know why? I said, I bet, I bet you money. I said, because at the other house, Mr. Peaches roamed free. And he was in the garden, and he was on the porch, and he was over here, and he was over there. We really didn't have problems with rabbits and squirrels. And in, inside the yard, though, we would have a few times we had an issue with, like, a, a little mole or vole or whatever. Well, guess who came to the rescue? Buddy and Rosie. So that's who we're going to use. All right, guys. Stuff to think about. Got a lot of work to do in the next couple of days. Got to start thinning some things out replant these sweet potatoes and get my blueberry bushes in the ground they need to be planted we held off because of rain 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 and then we added and it's a good thing that we did because we were going to place them all over on this back side and there's a ginormous electrical wire running up that way so we're not able to put the blueberries in there because we don't want to cut that right that's no good all right so this is the garden update mini update from the rabbit We'll have another update as far as full gardening and all of that probably by the end of next week. Probably do one every week or two just to kind of see how it goes. And we're going to keep you, uh, you know, posted in terms of blight and rain and weather and the three sisters and rabbits and deer and everything. It's going to be one heck of a ride this season. Well, we're going to take it head on and so should you. We'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care out there. Thank you so much for all of your advice and your input. Guys, it's awesome. And let me tell you right now, or let me ask you right now, if you watch our videos fairly regularly and you're not subscribed, keep down there, push that button, baby. We want you here all the time. We appreciate you. We love you. Y'all stay safe. We'll see you on the next video.